Hey, nice to see you, honey bunch. Damn, you looking good today. <laughs> Hi there. My name is Nico Austin Smith and I'm an actor here in LA. I've been working consistently consistently for the past three years. And I want to introduce you to somebody very special to me. those of you who know me, you know that my natural hair journey has been a long process the past three years and I've officially mini chopped my hair. I cut about four inches and it's just taken a long time for me to feel confident in my fro, in my crown and I'm ready to rock it in 2022. So if you like videos or photos or for me to share my story regarding that, please leave a comment below. I'd definitely be happy to do so. 2022 is my year of five. It's my year of change, my year of rebellion, my year of chance, my year of fun and play. So here we are. I really hope that you enjoyed your holiday season. Happy new year. I'm so happy that you are here with me and continuing and wanting to learn more in 2022 to make it your best year ever. If you missed my previous videos on this video series about all the acting terms you need to know in general and all the acting terms you need to know about auditioning, you can catch those right up here. Welcome to the final list of about 40 onset acting terms that you need to know. This one's probably the most exciting. It's like, hooray, you made it, you're on set, you booked, congratulations. Go ahead and just speak that into existence. Go ahead and manifest that. It's happening this year. Now, what the heck is Honey Wagon? This is what you'll be emailed from production the day before you shoot. Here's a tip. I always look up all of the actors that I'll be working with before I get to set so that I can have a better idea of what to expect. The call sheet will have your name next to your character number, which is in the order of importance. So if your number is like one through five or one through 10, you're pretty high up on their list. Next to your name, they'll either be a WS, which means work start, or they'll be a WSF, which is work start, work finish, or they'll just be a W next to your name, which means work if you've already had a day on set, or you'll have an H, for holding if you're on hold that day, which yes, it'll still be paid for your time. Or you'll have a WF, which means work finished to last day on set. Next to that, you should see a time, which is your report to base time. So that's the time you'll be needing to report to base camp. That's your call time. Sometimes you'll even see the times listed for you to go to hair and makeup, for you to go to wardrobe, for you to go to rehearsal, etc. It'll all be on the call sheet. Just make sure you take a look at it. Production will tell you to follow the yellow sign with the production code on it to parking. And then you'll either be shuttled over to base camp or you'll be parking right on base camp where it's a short walk, so you're good. This is where you'll be arriving. It's where all the trailers are. Go ahead, take your trailer pic. You deserve it. Also, go ahead and silence your phone before you get to set. That's important. <laughs> The second AD or the second assistant director is who you'll be checking in with at base camp. They'll mark that you're here on the exhibit G and then they or a PA, a production assistant, will show you to your trailer, will take your breakfast order, and then they'll let you know when it's time for you to go to hair and makeup. HMU is what they'll call it. Honey Wagon has the smallest trailers. This is usually reserved for your co-stars, day player roles, supporting characters in future films. It's really just enough room to sit, eat, and get dressed. Don't expect anything too fancy, but you have a trailer and it's so nice to have your own personal space. When you arrive, if the production is a well-oiled machine, your wardrobe should be hanging up in your trailer or it should arrive moments after you've landed in your trailer. After you eat your breakfast, go ahead and get dressed. This is usually reserved for guest stars, major supporting characters, or series regulars. And then single trailers or half trailers are your main top players, characters one through five. When you book your first guest star and you have that one third trailer, you're gonna feel so fancy because they're usually pretty nice and you have like a couch, pulls out to a bed, you got your little mini fridge, you got a TV, you got it all. And it's great, <laughs> enjoy it. If you're on a smaller shoot or if you're shooting a commercial, they don't always have trailers and per SAG rules, that's actually okay as long as you have a separate area to sit, which is called a holding area. Smaller projects, if they have a holding area, they might not have a base camp with like trailers and stuff and that's okay too. Talent holding areas usually have a tent over them with some basic tables and chairs. If you're shooting somewhere where production has you staying at a hotel or an Airbnb or somewhere that's not your general home base, you'll be entitled to per diem if it's a SAG project. This is your meal allowance per day and it's usually $60 a day. You're paid this every single day that you're working and days that you're on hold. 
you get it. I like to receive my per diem in a check that I deposit immediately. Like it's just a handwritten check. Go ahead and write that out for the week for me. Or in cash, which is what they did when I was in Queen Sugar, but then they kind of stopped doing that for some reason. I'm not sure why, but it was like some sag rule. I'm not sure. But most productions don't generally do cash anymore. They'll either handwrite you a check or it'll be on your first check that you get with your weekly rate, which it's not supposed to be taxed. So keep in mind with that when you look at your check. But also it could take weeks for you to get your first weekly check. So you want your per diem now. Otherwise you'd be spending your own money on food. Ask production for a handwritten check so you can deposit it and use it immediately. You may hear people saying on set, oh yeah, we started principal photography last week. That means they just started shooting where people were speaking with scenes last week. First AD is the first assistant director. They're the ones talking to co-stars and background talent, and they're the ones assisting the director. They can also give instruction to guest stars and series regular players and main cast talent if the director asks them to, but usually that's the director's job. If you're a principal, you're considered first team, which means when the first AD calls for first team, a PA will notify you that it's ready to head to set. This means you're shooting at an actual location, not a studio, not on a lot. So it could be super muddy or dirty, just FYI. A night shoot means you'll be working overnight. Usually call time is anywhere between three to 6 p.m., which means with a 12 hour turnaround time, you could be wrapping anywhere between three and 6 a.m. It's a long day. So sleep before you head to set, get your coffee, get your matcha, stay hydrated and conserve your energy. Once you're done with HMU and wardrobe and your look has been approved, it's time to get wired by the sound department. Sometimes this happens right after rehearsal, sometimes it happens before rehearsal, this kind of just happens whenever there's time. So when you get wired, you'll usually receive a waist pack or you'll receive an ankle pack with the wire running up and the mic usually lands and like sticks to your chest right about here. So like I said, after getting wired or sometimes before getting wired, you'll be doing a rehearsal. And it sometimes also happens before you're even done with HMU. They'll call for a rehearsal early just cause maybe it's a big setup or blah, blah, blah. Just be ready for a rehearsal. And you can have your little sides that they give you at the beginning of the day with you. That's okay. Rehearsal is when you're introduced to the director for the first time and you'll do a blocking rehearsal where you block out the scene with the director, kind of play around so that the DP and the camera operators can get a vibe for how to set up their shots and the lighting department grips. Everybody watches this rehearsal just know there's gonna be a lot of people watching just like there'll be a lot of people watching when you're shooting so that everyone can know what's going on with the scene and uh, they can light it and get everything ready for you. You'll hear rehearsals up and that's when you know the director is about to call action on rehearsal. This is where your chair will be set up so that you can sit and chill in between takes and scene setups. Have some water with you, have your snack, maybe have a book, have some music going. It's your space, you got it also known as the script supervisor. They're the person making sure that everybody is sticking to the script. That includes getting shots as the stage direction mentions. Also includes letting you know when you've made a slight change in the dialogue. Sometimes the directors want you to improvise, but at the end of the day, depending on the studio and the director and all the suits in the room, they may also need you to say the line exactly how it was written. Boom mic is part of the sound department. They are picking up all the environmental sounds, including your speaking voice. They are the stand-ins, thank them. They are standing in for you while the DP and camera ops set up the next shot so that you can have a break, so thank them. This is where the video monitors are set up so that HMU, wardrobe, the producers, and the director can see everything that's happening in the shots as if they're actually watching it on TV. Sometimes I like to go to Video Village right before they're done setting up the shot so that I can see the look that they're going for and the vibe that they're going for. Just my personal preference because it can be really beautiful. Just the amount of artistry is really cool to me. Dailies are all the things that were recorded during the day. If you're mic just assume that anybody can hear everything that you're saying because I've been in a situation where somebody had gotten in trouble for saying some things on the dailies that were sent to the producers in the network. But the dailies are just that, everything that was recorded throughout the whole day, they send it off to the network and the editors and then they start looking through it, combing through it, getting the takes that they like, etc., etc. They do this every single day. That's why they're called dailies. Sometimes you hear the first AD yell this. This means it's almost time for you to step onto set and begin shooting your scene. Once you've stepped onto set, last looks will be called. HMU will come running in to fix anything that they need to fix on you, whether it's a lip, whether it's fixing a particular hair. So if your lips are chapped or you have smelly breath or you need deodorant, that would be the time to ask them. 
You oftentimes hear people say, I've got so-and-so flying in now, or I have this prop flying in now. That just means it's coming. It's on its way. It's not actually flying. I literally thought that that meant something was flying in on a plane and it's landing. I don't know. I, I don't know. And one is going to the bathroom. If you ever have to go to the bathroom, let a PA know or just let somebody know, the first AD, anybody, so that someone knows where you are just in case they call for you and people aren't wondering where you are. Because at the end of the day, everyone really appreciates that. You never want to be an actor that people can't find because that's really annoying. You want a snack? Craft Services got you. There's usually really yummy stuff on Sag Soaps. They have anything from junk food to healthy food. Hot tea, coffee, Gatorade, soda, snacks galore, you name it, they got it. Learn their names. Chances are they can make something special. Stay hydrated as well. That's a big one. People miss that. You gotta stay hydrated. Lunch can be any time during the day, just like how breakfast can be any time during the day. Breakfast is when you first arrive, it's the start of the call time, it's the start of the crew call, that's breakfast. Lunch is six hours into the day, so if your call time's at three or crew call is at three, then lunch would be scheduled for 9 p.m., and that's called lunch, just the more you know. So pay attention to the call sheet, because the lunch time will be there listed in the upper right-hand corner. If production is over the six-hour mark and nobody has called lunch yet, and it's a SAG project, that means that there's a meal penalty that they will owe you, which means you'll be getting paid because they missed the chance to call it. I believe if they're in the middle of a scene, they have like 10 to 20 minute grace period. I believe that's it. Lunch lasts anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. If lunch is less than 30 minutes, then they owe you another meal penalty, if it's under SAG. In my experience, I usually get about 45 minutes for lunch before I'm called in to hair and makeup for touch-ups. That signifies the end of lunch. Once lunch is over and another six hours has passed and the day is not yet wrapped, production owes another meal. It's usually some form of catering like pizza or tacos or something like really quick. If they miss calling the second meal and no food shows up and it's a SAG project, that's, you guessed it, and the meal penalty and you should be getting paid for that. Overtime kicks in after 10 hours on SAG projects for a weekly player and 8 hours for a day player. Double time kicks in after 12 hours. Please note though, you're not paid for meal breaks. So you've been on set for 10 hours, but you took an hour for lunch, you've only worked 9 hours, so you don't get overtime yet. Mileage refers to the reimbursement that production would owe you if you are shooting somewhere that is outside of the studio zone. In LA, if you Google the studio zones, you'll be able to see what the studio zone is. And if you're shooting outside the studio zone, that means it's pretty, pretty far. Then they owe you mileage for driving all the way to hell over to where they're shooting. Under SAG rules, when you're not giving 12 hours from the time you sign in to the time you sign out before your next call time the next day, you are entitled to a forced call payment, which I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe it might be $600. So keep track of this. For instance, let's say you wrapped at 3 a.m. and you're signing out at 3 a.m. Production's like, okay, your call time tomorrow is 2 p.m. No, I mean, you could say yes and take the $600, or you could say no and have them push it to 3 o'clock. Up to you. Usually if there's background in the scene, the first AD will call background action before the director calls your act. This is a board used for identifying a shot in post-production. You'll see it labeled with the production name, the scene number, the take number, all that goodness. If you heard second sticks, that means the camera didn't quite catch the slate, they'll have to do it again. And if you hear tails, that means that they will do the slate at the end of the scene. The director said go, yay, go. I love talking about lenses. This is how it generally goes, but it can be different for every set you're on. Usually the DP will elect to shoot wide, then shoot medium, then go in for coverage. Wide angle is 16 millimeters to 35 millimeters. Medium 35 millimeters to 55 millimeters. Coverage and close-ups are 70 millimeters to 100 millimeters. When you hear a camera op say, hey, I'm switching to 100, you know, they're getting pretty close. Or when you hear them say, I'm switching to a 55 or like anything between those numbers, you know what the hell they're talking about. Or you can even ask them, hey, what lens are you going to? It's pretty cool. It's also great so that you know in your actor mind, what adjustments you need to make because if it's like they're shooting like this you're probably gonna play the scene a little bit differently than if they were shooting super super wide they don't always tell you so it's good to know this is a shot of just your face so that the audience can see your reaction and the editor can have something to cut to. Coverage is where you'll really want to have your game face on. These are the shots that most people will remember. In my experience, they generally cover the star of the show first. Sometimes if you're a co-star or guest star, the star of the show will literally peace out after their coverage and then it's time to get your coverage and they have a stand-in standing for them so then you don't get to act with them. It's a diva move and I get it, they're tired, they're series regular, but just know that that's a possibility. It's definitely more rare than anything else, but it happens so don't be shocked if it does. 
Turning around means that they are changing the camera angles. So if they were shooting this way, they're gonna shoot this way now. Usually still, it will go wide, medium to close-up coverage, and then they'll turn around the camera setup to get the other side. Unless it's a show with A and B cam, which is pretty cool. Sometimes you even have like a C cam operator. That's like three cameras, multi-cam comedies. Maybe that's four. This means the camera op, DP, director, whoever wants you to slightly cheat your body towards the camera. So this is like lens of the camera that I'm looking at. If I'm here and they're like, hey Nico, can you cheat the camera? I'd be like, yeah, but I could still keep my, my face that way. I mean, it, you know, it's whatever they want, they'll guide you through it. It may feel a little bit awkward, but just know on camera, it doesn't look that awkward, so you're good. When you hear this, it means the directors, the producers, everybody's super happy with what they got. They're super happy with your work and the takes, and they feel that it's time to move on to the next scene. When you hear someone yell this out, move out of the way, it means they have pointy, potentially dangerous filmmaking equipment coming through and you don't want to be in their way because you don't want to get hurt. This pertains to when you're shooting outside. This is the time right before sunset when the sun is redder and softer and it's just so beautiful. It's very ambitious to shoot at this time because it's literally an hour. I mean, it turns out really beautiful though, but just know if you're trying to get a golden hour scene, they're like, oh, but we're shooting this a golden hour. It's going to be a little crazy and people might get mad at each other, but it'll be beautiful in the end. This is the second to last shot before wrapping for the day. It was aimed after the famous production manager, Abby Singer, who would alert his crew two shots before the last shot. He would alert them saying that the set needed to be cleared because they needed to get out of there. This is the final shot before wrapping for the day. It's called this because the next shot would technically be taken out of glass. Sometimes people yell rap before they are able to get room tone, but essentially room tone is when the boom mic operator needs to get the tone of the room for editing purposes. So everybody has to be quiet for at least one minute. He'll record the room tone and then everybody can get on their way. You're done. Congrats on a great day. Remember to sign out with your exhibit G, take a photo of that and make sure it has your exact time you came in, when you took your lunch break. If there's a forced call, make sure it's notated on there. If you are getting mileage, make sure it's notated on there and make sure when you sign out, take a photo of all of it so you have it all together just in case there's any snafus with payment coming later and you can be like, nope, I have all this information, this is what it was. And it may be kind of hard to do that when it's 3 a.m. and you're wrapped and you've been there since 3 p.m. the day before, but you'll be happy when you can get paid. If you're not SAG, but are working on a SAG set, be sure to bring the voucher with you. I think you can find this on the SAG website and be sure to get an AD or producer to sign it for you. You need three vouchers in order to join the union, so don't forget it. These are the drivers that drive you to and from base camp. Learn their names, because they'll really appreciate it. Basically what I mentioned earlier, sign in sign out sheet is the exhibit G. The sheet will have your name on it, along with all the other actors that were there on that day. It will have your time in, when you took your lunch, your release time from set, as well as your release time from hair and makeup and wardrobe. If there was a meal penalty or a forced call or mileage, anything like that, please, please, please make sure it's notated on that exhibit G and take a photo of that. Last but not least, we have ADR, which is automated dialogue replacement. And if you're curious what that is, I do have a vlog up here of me doing ADR from when I was on season two of The Birch on Facebook Watch. It's basically where you dub over some of the lines that weren't quite clear or that sound department didn't catch on the day, or you ad lib some lines, maybe do some huffs, maybe some screams, whatever, but it's super fun. And if you want to see me do that, you can watch this video up there. Damn. Oh, <laughs> that's it for this acting terms series. You now know every single acting term that you need to know on set, off set, and the audition room, just general terms. You know everything in order to be taken seriously in this industry. You have all of the tools that you need to put your best foot forward. Commit these to memory. Know everyone's name. And for the love of God, please hang up your wardrobe when you wrap. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know if this video series was helpful to you and what you'd like to see more of in 2022. See you Thursday after next and happy new year. <laughs>